Now, before starting this review, I would like to thank Funnel Audio for sending in the RP600M for review, as well as the Alto IN30. Um, they have generated a exclusive code for my viewers. So if you are shopping and you would like to purchase this, check the description below for exclusive um, codes, a discount code for you to use and enjoy. Now, this code, I believe, expires at the end of this month in April. So if you're trying out the code and it doesn't work, I apologize. And as you can see, it's a bookshelf speaker. And despite, it may look a little bit small on the camera, but in reality, it's a large size bookshelf speaker for um, its lineup. Now, the RP600M uses a horn-loaded tweeter. And we'll talk about the horn design in a minute, uh, but let's go over the details first. The woofers use a uh, ceramic metallic material, and as you can see, it's copper in color. Um, the cabinet here is MDF with uh, vinyl, and the finish I have here is walnut, and uh, it comes in ebony and piano uh, black as well, if that's your um, color choice. Now, the finish is not as great as in most speakers. Unfortunately, I think the vinyl is a little bit off and they could have done a little bit of a better job. But it doesn't look too bad, especially for the price. I don't think it's a big concern. But one thing I really like about the build is the fascia. The fascia is actually a pretty solid material and any um, you know, highly regarded speaker engineer will tell you um, that the fascia is a very important design in a speaker. Uh, because that's where the drivers are essentially, uh, you know, holding on, right? So I thank Klipsch for actually taking, you know, a consideration into their fascia design. It is a rare ported design, so which means that the port is at the back of the speaker. Um, so the closer you put it to the wall, technically there's more uh, bass response uh, from my experience. Now, the binding post is very nice, uh, made out of plastic, and you can use either banana or spades. And it, you can also do by wiring if you so wish to, since it's a two-way binding post. Now, let's talk about the um, technology behind it. The Klipsch RP600M, like I mentioned, is a horn-loaded uh, design, and it uses a one-inch titanium dome and Tactrix horn design. Now, this is their own design. Now the horn tweeter, if you see here, it may just look like kind of, you know, a, a, a small dot really. But if you look in the back, the whole tweeter is actually not that smaller than the woofer um, in terms of its design. So I thought that was something interesting to share. Now, if you look at the tube design of the port, the port itself is made out of plastic but it is designed in a very specific way. Uh, it's designed to actually tune the speakers in a very specific way. So it's not like you know someone pushed a tube in there and decided, oh, there you go, right? Uh, someone actually sat there and decided to tune the port and the length of it and the width of it and the shape of it to actually make the speaker sound the way they are. So I kind of appreciated that and I would share some uh, photos here because I think it's a pretty interesting thing to look at. And Klipsch speakers have been around for a very long time. Um, they've been in the business of making speakers like horn speakers for a long time. And so the horn design is nothing new. It's not a new technology. However, it is keep on improving, which is what impresses me. Now, the horn speakers, from my memory, uh, were first used really in theaters. And I still remember when I was uh, hunting, so to speak, for vintage speakers, like Altec speakers, um, I used to go to closed down theaters to ask the owner if they had any Altecs or JBLs available. Um, and you know, often they don't know the value, so they will sell it to you for a very low price. So I've, I've done that before and have uh, succeeded a few times. So crazy times really. But the reason the horn speakers were so appealing and used in home theaters and why I think it's a great application for home theater use is because it is very efficient. 
Now it is rated at 96 dB at one meter. Um, and you may ask, huh, I heard that horn speakers are efficient, but why so? So let me explain. Um, and in, let me explain in a very easy way. So if I put my mouth here and talk like this, my voice is naturally amplified. And so it takes less power for me to speak to someone uh, who may be farther away. So you often see people uh, far, far away and you go, hey John, right? But you don't have to speak as loud to reach John because you've done the horn effect, so to speak. So that is exactly what they did with the tweeter and speakers. So in theaters, at least in the old days, they didn't need to use you know, crazy 100 watts or 200 watts or 600 watts um, amplifiers because they used this kind of naturally amplified design and in those days they used tube amplifiers which were like five watts uh, max. So there you have it. So for home theater, I think it's a really good design because it can get really loud and the vocals are super clear. Now, it's kind of weird because if you do this, your voice doesn't get clear. It kind of gets muffled and it kind of gets um, grainy. And you know, in, in, in real world, if I do this, that's what I'm talking about. It, it's not a very pleasant sound. So really a design like this um, had a lot of compromises. And one of them being that it, it tend to be really bright sounding. And uh, so a lot of people talk about how the Altec um, speakers, the theater speakers, the voice of the theater speakers were really bright sounding for the most part and not, not a lot of bass. But with the right amplifiers, people are talking about how it really had a lot of airy and um, transparency to it. And in fact, um, I remember a guy telling me these speakers with like three watts, three watts um, could, could uh, fill a room of a, a theater or a, a gymnasium. So that's pretty insane. Now, same thing goes here. It's very efficient. And Klipsch has been doing this for a long time. So they've tuned this so that it doesn't sound so bright or kind of muffled. So the effect you get here is really a very crisp and lively sound. Now it's not bright. See how I said it's a lively sound? It's not bright. So although the beauty of a horn speaker is to really bring out the music, right? Make it like a real concert experience. Um, and it's not a boring sounding speaker at all. At this price range, you know, you get a lot of speakers that are just way too boomy and way, trying way too hard to give you that bass. This speaker doesn't do that. It kind of gives you, you know, an open sound and really crisp and clear um, sound. So when you're listening to any type of music, really you're getting like a concert experience, you really feel like the artist or the singer or you know, the, the instruments are in the room playing for you. Now that brings me to imaging because that's really important in a concert experience. Um, these speakers are not really there to image very well. And all horn speakers were kind of like that in a way because they're kind of spreading the sound, you know, like, like this, right? They're not kind of focusing on you. But if you tilt it towards yourself a little bit, like tilt it, you know, uh, it gives you a pretty good imaging. And I don't know how Klipsch has done this, but um, you know, my JBLs don't do that for sure. The, you know, my Altex in my collection doesn't do that as well. Um, in fact, I have the old Klipsch Last Cala and that's the first gen, uh, they're up to third gen now. And those speakers don't image at all. Um, they, all you know, they were kind of meant to not image, but they have that 3D holographic sound. So that's, that's what really uh, I wanted to get into. The Klipsch RP600M has a very holographic sound, like a 3D imaging. So it's really impressive because it kind of gives you that concert live experience at the same time, it's holographic. Sound is coming from everywhere. And it's really, um, you know, some people may not like it and call it kind of echoey in a way. But when you're 
um, listening to you know jazz or on any kind of um, like Ella Fitzgerald or you know um, and, and um, Louis Armstrong and all those kind of um, artists. It, it's really in the room. Um, and one thing I would say is that um, it doesn't really work well with um, modern type of music. Um, it is rated at 40 hertz, I believe. So it goes down to 40 hertz, but it really doesn't do the job down in the sub bass region. The mid bass is really punchy and really, really enthusiastic. Like I was very surprised at the amount of mid bass. Um, now in a home theater situation or even for music applications, um, I suggest adding a subwoofer, a Klipsch subwoofer with the Klipsch RP600M. And this really brings out that sub bass that is missing out. So all in all, um, to summarize, the imaging is quite nice. It has a 3D kind of imaging effect. The sound stage is absolutely spectacular um, because of the horn design. It is very efficient um, and the bass is really tight and punchy up to the mid bass and it starts kind of cutting off down in the sub bass so that can be taken care of using a subwoofer. Now this brings us to matching um, amplifiers. Now solid states have been for you know quite a bit of time a big no-no with um, horn speakers, and because you know a tube amplifier is more warm sounding and has been known for that warm sound, really a lot of people like to use tubes. And solid states have been known for you know being a little bit more bright sounding with horn speakers. Um, which is a shame because I found that solid state amplifiers had more grab, more authority in the bottom end in most cases. So I experimented with few amplifiers until I landed on one and I found the Atoll IN30. This is an integrated amplifier and it can be used as a preamp and an amplifier um, as well as a headphone amp. And the nice thing about this unit is that it has a pre-out section so you can use this to hook up other components or even your subwoofer from Klipsch. So I think this was you know, one thing that I really liked about the Atoll. It is no bullshit design and it's very minimalistic and just overall high quality sound. And here is the real thing that I really like about the Atoll with the Klipsch. Um, Atoll, it doesn't have a lot of power, but I feel that it has that kind of authority in the bottom end and most, most importantly, it's not bright on the top end. Um, it's a very warm sounding, luscious sounding amplifier uh, with very good imaging. So that's why I really liked the Atoll with the Klipsch RP600M. And then I paired it with something more expensive, more exotic, and that's the Audio Space from Hong Kong. Now this amplifier I'll get into in my future reviews, but it uses the EL84 tubes and it's an integrated design as well. Unfortunately, you cannot add clip subwoofers to this integrated design because it doesn't have a pre-out section. And I believe it's about 12 watts per channel. Uh, now I just got it for review, so I had a very short amount of time to play around with it. But at first I found the amplifier to be very live sounding which is a typical characteristic of a tube amplifier and um, a bit too lively sounding for the Klipsch RP600Ms. But once it started warming up and you know, the warm up time seems to be around 30 minutes or so to really kind of get that effect um, that I'm gonna talk about right now, really it becomes much more holographic and much more luscious in the mid range. The strings become more realistic and attention grabbing. Um, not bright and you know not as lively as you know in the beginning. Now for those of you that are looking to really um, you know use this for stereo and have the time for that 30 minute to one hour warm-up time, I suggest you look into audio space um, AS2I model, which is the you know most affordable, but I think it sounds really good for the price. For stereo and you know a little bit of home theater then I suggest you look at the Atoll um, IN30. Now, one place I wouldn't really recommend this speaker is for desktop use. 
if you were looking at this to get it for you know your desktop, first of all, it's a big speaker. Um, it will take a lot of space, so you will need kind of a large desk. And second of all, I don't recommend it to begin with because if you sit down too close to the speaker for um, kind of close listening experience, because there's less room and you're, you're really sitting close to the tweeter and it does kind of get too lively and too uh, bright. So I wouldn't recommend it for a desktop use. So I will be making a demo of these speakers with my demo head um, and post it on our channel and Patreon. Um, and talking about that, please do consider supporting us on our Patreon. Uh, Patreon support is really vital to the support of this channel. And also we will be posting our videos early on Patreon as well as offering other benefits for those who decide to support us. Now with this being said, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Shh.